Hi, and welcome to the Vlogger Interviews. Today we're going to meet Gordon of Flash Vlog. Now, speaking with Gordon made me think of Clark Kent and Superman. By day, Gordon is an unassuming landscaper slash gardener. But by night, well, you guessed it, he's a vlogger. First question, of course, that, that is, how did you end up doing this? Maybe end up isn't the right word, but how did you start doing this? Well, about two years ago, a friend of mine, he came to me and he had uploaded a video about his truck that he was trying to sell and on uh, Craigslist. And he got all these hits and suddenly he was getting all this attention on his truck. And he came to me and he said, Gordon, I want to do some truck videos. I want to start some trucks and, and just see where it goes. But I don't know how to edit. Could you help me edit? And I said, why are you editing this? What, what are you talking about? And he says, I want to put it up on YouTube. And I said, what, what, what is this YouTube thing? So he showed me how to, to do it. And I had been into video editing for a long time. I used to do 8 millimeter movies when I was a kid. <laughs> and video all along as it's progressed, but you never get anywhere other than showing it to friends or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> family. I know that so, too. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. Same, same time, yeah. Right, so anyway, when I discovered it, he showed me how to upload, suddenly I'm starting to upload things. And I'm seeing other videos getting huge views, 100, 300,000 views, and I'm thinking, hey, this is easy. So I upload a few things, and two weeks later, I've got 10 views. And I'm going, what, what is going on here? What's the problem? So I kind of got into it just a little at a time, and then I started doing videos where I would start a truck up, and suddenly I would have 1,000 views in a week. And I go, well, okay, now getting views is easy, I guess, if you're doing the right thing, but this is not what I want to do. This is not me. So then... Anyway, after almost two years of editing my own videos, and I did a year's worth of editing my friend's videos at one a week, both channels, I finally said, you know, this is going nowhere. Uh, and I canceled the whole thing last October 2011. And I missed YouTube so much that about a month later, I started up the Flash Vlog channel that is on now. That's a pretty long way to go in a short time. How did, how did you manage to accelerate it? Well, because I streamlined the entire video recording process uh, to, to just doing vlogs, just talking about what was going on in my life. Right. Um, and it's a bit of a character, what I'm doing. I mean, it's, it's a mixture. And then I was able to insert a few skits or other characters along the way. But as long as I keep it short and down to three minutes... Um, it seems to be something I can handle time-wise. And I seem to have a very solid core of people that are interested. So that's, that's a good thing. Now, do you do it because you, you like it as a hobby? I mean, do you have any intentions? Or, I mean, or you, you're, you just want to take the ride and see where it leads you? Um, yeah, I think the latter is probably good. Is, is what you said is... Uh, is take the ride and see where it leads me. I have to be careful because managing time involved in editing, uh, even though I'm, the shooting the video doesn't take quite as long now as it used to, and the ideas come rather rapidly now after a couple of years of doing this. So, yeah, I don't really have um, an intention other than just to share a little bit of my life in a creative process that keeps me happy because I'm in a really mundane job. I mean, landscaping in Seattle in the rain, oh, and it rains a lot. <laughs> I've always loved film, and so the idea while you're out there in the rain, pulling weeds or running a lawnmower, my, my mind begins to go in different directions, and some people find that amusing, and uh, an awful lot don't. I recognize I'm in a minority. People ask me, what, what's, your, what's the reaction to you doing the, these videos on YouTube in real life? I mean, how many people that... I come in contact on a daily basis, go, wow, I saw what you saw, what you were talking about last night, I, I, you know, zero feedback. Nobody in our age group that I know of 
uh, pays any attention. I'm I'm viewed as a, a bit of an oddball in that respect because <laughs> <I understand. laughs> because people say, "Why are you on YouTube talking about yourself? What's what's wrong with you?" And um, it's just it's just an amusing thing to do. And it, like I said, it's creative. It's sort of like rich. It's sort of like the secret life of Walter Mitty <laughs> because it gives me a very low cost, low time consuming ability to kind of fantasize about what would happen if I did something totally out of the ordinary and totally unusual that just pops into my mind and I, I think about it and process it and then I, I shoot it on video. So it's, it's creative but it also helps keep your mind active. I've been listening lately to a lot more uh, audio podcasts and I think podcasts started the same way. They, they were you know, they were listened to by a very small sort of uh, uh, minority of people, and now it's it's becoming more and more common and sort of a supplement supplementing radio. So I'm wondering if this is going to evolve, probably a lot bigger than that, of course, but uh, in that direction. Yeah. And it might. Um, I don't know if you caught on. I used to be in radio. I spent six, seven years as a, a disc jockey, program director at a radio station in Oregon. Oh, wow. And that's kind of where I began to develop some of my editing ideas, which transfer to my videos. And uh, we can see now how radio is changing. Um, as you m mentioned about podcasts, that certainly is new and expanding. And it seems like commercial radio is... Um, Certainly not on the incline as we used to see it. It seems much to be as much television more... isn't either. You like to do a lot of collaborations. I've noticed with Bill TV, who I also Bill TV Macon, who have also I've also interviewed, um, and uh, Cheeky Chicken Head, uh, yes. and all the and every, all and Spigots, of course, who I've also interviewed. <laughs> you know, right, all of these right. people that that have um, you know been part of. I mean, and then is that one of your? if I can call it that, a strategy in terms of building sort of your, your following? Or, or is it just because you liked working with these people? The collaborations, if it expands my viewership, that's a really nice thing. Uh, I've, I've pretty much let go of that idea of getting 300,000 views for any one of my videos. I mean, let's be realistic. So, but I love the collaboration aspect. If we go back a little bit, when I was in radio, um, it's pretty much you're in a room talking by yourself. And I always enjoy the idea of a collaboration with other people because then you it sparks more creativity and and there's a certain magic that can happen and a chemistry if the situation is is right. So I like the collaborations only well primarily because it's fun to bounce ideas off of other people and to see what kind of chemistry you can get in because these people I'm doing collaborations with, Tom Cody and then the other people that you mentioned with Nate, uh, Nate Pinky and the Schwartzcaster and uh, all of them, we seem to, at, at some level, are operating in a very similar vein. And so to tap into that creativity with other extremely talented and creative people is like a dream come true for somebody who's used to just working by themselves. And now, is, is it... Has doing this impacted your regular life in any way? Yes, to a large degree, because my family sort of resents the time that I'm spending oh. creating and uploading. <laughs> Hence, that's really the reason why um, back in uh, October I went ahead and canceled the, cha the other channel. But, like I say, once I learned how to mm, become a little more disciplined, streamline the process, it's not been the quite the same impact. I mean, it's still going to be a little bit disruptive. So you're learning how to manage your time to just to be able to do this. Yeah. Time management. That yeah. you you got it right, Rich. That is the key. Interesting. So now, um, when you somebody says, "Why do you do it?" What's your answer? Ah, uh, that is that's a really good question because I mean, I want to reach out not just to people in my age group, but younger people as well. But the the why do I do it? I do it because it's fun, it's creative. You begin to expand your thinking, you begin to become uh, much more aware of maybe not such the, the boring things, the mundane things of life, but you begin to go into a different 
uh, mental <laughs> shape and or condition or level or something. Just get out and do it. Some people are so afraid to do anything different. They're afraid they're going to fall on their face. I say to people, just get out and shoot some video. Don't make the project so big that you, oh, it's got to be in widescreen, high definition. Just shoot some video. Thank you, Gordon. Remember, you can catch him on Flash Vlog. You can follow me on Twitter at Rick Flicks or right here. I will see you next time.